Hello guys, my name is Wale Farah and this is Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. It feels really good to be back on the show with a brand new season and I'm so excited to tell you that we have new changes to the show that should excite you even more. We've, we're introducing two new segments on the show. One is the street tech. We're taking Tech Roundup to the streets, literally and figuratively. We'll be visiting random locations and offices uh, all over the town, or all over the city, and asking people the most basic tech questions that we can come up with. Stay ready as we just might visit your neighborhood and your office really soon. Jenny, who co-hosts the show, would also anchor a new segment called Global Article Review where she'll be presenting highlights from the top tech stories around the world. Our anchor story this week is NITDA's new technology bill that empowers the agency to completely control technology activities in Nigeria. It's a packed show. Let's get started. Our first story this week. Um, a 26-page bill by the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, has been making rounds and causing some outrage in the tech community in Nigeria. Many seem particularly enraged over these three sections. The first one, Section 6, which is talking about NITDA approving, uh, testing and approving technology before it is used in Nigeria. I just think that, I mean, I need to know why they want to do that. Uh, Maybe that will give us a better sense of how to comment on this. But just the sheer idea that any technology, and you know, it's marked any technology. Technology is a wide range of um, solutions these days, from hardware to middleware to firmware to software. Uh, you are talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of solutions that are developed locally. Uh, does this also include solutions that are imported uh, into the country, uh, to solutions that businesses, individuals connect to um, through the cloud? The second one is about, you know, um, companies making over a hundred million. I think there is something to be said to this as, you know, um, a policy headed in the right direction. If we're taxing businesses to give back and then be able to grow the industry i think that's that's a practice that you you see everywhere uh, in tax laws uh all over the world so i don't think this is i don't think this is bad but i think um how do you i mean how do you measure um you know the right level of profitability before you tax before you start taxing people for this extra fund um, why is 100 million the right threshold? Why not 10? Or why, why not a billion? I think there, there will be argument for more or less. We just need to really figure out, uh, you know, at what level should companies be paying this, this levy? And then are we giving tax break uh, to companies that pay for this? Is there additional tax incentives that encourages them to be able to do this willingly? And, you know, it's 1% again, the right threshold. I mean, these are some of the things that, you know, we, 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 we really need to analyze. And very quickly, before I bring Jenny in, the last one, Section 20 and 21, uh, which is really about businesses identifying themselves as belonging or being in the IT space. I really don't know what this means. Uh, I think your memorandum of article with the CAC already tells where you are classified as a business. I'm not sure what the extra incentive is here. Um, you know, for uh, for this section, but you know, so that for the for so that I don't monopolize this conversation, I don't. Um, let's let's bring Jenny in. Jenny, very quickly on these three um, clauses in the bill, what are your what are your thoughts? How are you looking at this? Are, are we aligned, or you you are thinking about this um, very differently? Uh. To be honest, I must say that, first of all, you're, you're very logical in your thinking. I think I'm a little bit, so I'm leaning towards being very sentimental and emotional about this whole thing. Um, at this point, I somehow think that 
tech entrepreneurs and um, um, businessmen in the tech space or businesswomen in tech space don't even sleep anymore because at this at this rate, the government or agencies and government agencies can just wake up and come up with new policies that somehow don't encourage or um, you know to enable the tech community or, or innovation and all that stuff. So I honestly just think that a lot of these policies, including the ones that you just mentioned, are not doing anything to, to encourage innovation in any way in the country. Back to back, since last year, or two years back at this point, has been one policy or the other that somehow um, negatively impacts the growth that we've seen in the tech space. Um, about the, the second one you mentioned about um, the 1% that they have to pay. I, I honestly don't know why they have to pay, do pre-tax. I don't, I don't see the point of that. I, I, I mean, you, you mentioned that it seems sensible that they use some of the money or funds, they need funds to like develop the, the, um, the tech community. I think that's what they said. I'm not sure. But why does yeah. it have to be from tech companies or tech at the same time? I don't see the point of that. Now it's time for our second new segment. Um, global article review by Jenny. Enjoy. Time now for global article reviews. Elon Musk, who is no stranger to the news at this point, is making the rounds yet again. CBN reports that Elon Musk says Tesla will build a humanoid robot prototype by next year. I'm sure Will Smith is somewhere in his house shaking his head. Or maybe not in his house, but we'll see. Um, I don't know much about sports, but Goal.com is reporting that an ex-Manchester United midfielder, Anderson, is being investigated for fraud and money laundering, among others. A total of eight people are being accused of using cryptocurrency to cover the money trail. I'd never understand why cryptocurrency seems to always be involved in stuff like this, but I guess that's where we are right now. On to TechCrunch. TechCrunch is reporting that OnlyFans has suspended its decision to ban sexually explicit content after it received widespread backlash over the planned policy change. Now, OnlyFans is not necessarily known as a platform for adult content solely, but it is popularly known as a site to get adult content. I don't know what OnlyFans would be without adult content, but we'll see how this story plays out. Um, onto The Verge, Samsung has revealed its TVs can remotely be disabled if the company finds out that the units have been stolen. With how much Samsung TV costs, I think this is about time and it is absolutely long overdue. Now we have a story from CNBC yet again. PayPal is launching its cryptocurrency service in the UK. The US online payments giant said on Monday that it would let British customers buy, hold and sell digital currencies starting this week. I'm hoping that Nigerian policymakers can learn a thing or two from what the UK has done and probably let us or have let us have full use of cryptocurrencies again in the country. That's all for global article reviews. Now to Wally for number of the week. The number of the week is 95. The Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy says the work on the national policy on 5G is about 95% done and will be presented to the Federal Executive Council, the FEC, in due course. We sure hope that's the case so that we can start enjoying all the benefits of 5G network in Nigeria. We hope you've enjoyed this brand new episode, this brand new season. And as always, we'd love to hear your comment and feedback on the show. So please connect with me uh, throughout the season on LinkedIn at Wally Farron and subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube uh, channel if you haven't done so yet. Also, please like us on Facebook and on Instagram and be part of our ever vibrant tech community. Have a great weekend, guys, and until next week, good night.